Hallelujah. Thank you.
who anoint the mission. And then you pray for God to stop them. <laughs> house is sound and God one does a couple of months ago he said protect the sound there is a sound that is unique to every place and you got to understand that when they when the Israelites defeated Jericho they, they match bound the walls and God asked them to the trumpeters to blow the trumpet to release sound and then they screamed they didn't, they didn't use no bazooka they didn't use no grenade they didn't use no biological or chemical weapon. They did not connive with any country. They didn't call no G9, G8. They didn't call no coalition. They match around the wall and they yell, dan, 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 dan. And then they scream, Wah! and the wall came down. You gotta be very sensitive when there is a unique sound in the house that we've never heard before. I'm trying not to even go that way because they can they have the they have the tendency to change your message very quickly. That anointing. Amen. Let me drop this mic so I don't start whooping. But I want to teach, I want to continue um, the teaching today. I'm glad to see everyone today. Before we take the offerings, I just want to teach very quickly because this word is very strong on my heart. For as many of you who've been following, we're still teaching on the topic expansions and foundations expansions and foundations it is very important it is very important for us to pay close attention don't worry i'm not dressed the way i'm dressed for fun i'm not dressed the way i dressed because i just uh, didn't have no clothes or i came from a night shift i <laughs> i dressed the way i dressed on purpose so because when you're when you're in construction mode you're not in that appealing mode it is not that way that people want to see you they want to take you for dinner. They want to walk with you. They want to do things with you. They want to hang out with you. A lot of you are dressed in suit, beautiful clothes, wearing beautiful cologne. But spiritually, you're actually under construction. It's the reason why people don't want to hang out with you. And you don't even know it. But let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for grace released upon your word today. Give me clarity of speech and boldness. Let me speak your word. Lord, let one who is a representative of you. I ask that you anoint these leaves of clay that I bring your word with boldness, without injustice. Send an anointing relevant for today, God. Let somebody be blessed. Let someone be delivered. Let someone be restored. up. Let the hands of a laborer be equipped and strengthened and fortified today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. God, for the many wonderful things that you will do via the instrumentality of this word. We thank you because the enemy has no expression in this place. We thank you because demons don't have no place in this place. We thank you because your power is here. For your word says where your spirit is, there is liberty. We thank you, oh God, because you will beat us in a shape. You will nail us in a shape. You will paint us. You will dig us. You will move us into the people that you have destined for us to be. We thank you, God. We know 
out of your word will come with authority today in the name of Jesus. And let the people of God, I believe, say amen. 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 I wanted to pay very close attention. Last week, I continued the series, Expansions and Foundations. And, uh, and this is how it went down. I went from looking all fly. If you had seen the video, if you weren't here, look at the video. I was looking all fly, looking well dressed up with my suit, my beautiful shoes. And, and then I moved from there to looking very unattractive. And I'm wearing dirty boots and dirty clothes and looking like rubbish. You know, a lot of people would have denied me. If they said that is your pastor, they would have said that is not him. Because my pastor looked better than this, you know, from how I looked beautiful to how I then looked. We, we, we have to stop trying to, to look cool when, when we're in the building phase. God started speaking to me, he said, tell them to stop trying to look cool when you're in the building phase. Um, it's okay not to get the party invite. When you're in the building phase, they may not invite you for the party. That's okay. When you're in the building phase, it's okay not to get a group acceptance. They can call everybody, but you may not be called. They may promote everybody, but you may not be promoted. He said, calm down. He said, it's okay not to belong to any round or square table. You know, they may say, oh, this person is qualified, she is qualified, he is qualified. Get them on the round table, let us discuss. You may not be invited. You may be the most efficient worker in your organization, but you may not be invited to the round table. God said, calm down. Calm down. Say, don't, don't fret. Don't be afraid. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, calm down. Uh, it's, it's all in the plan. It's all in the plan. So, I want to announce a disclaimer for the people here, for those watching online. For, uh, for those new or watching online, please uh, pardon the way we look at the church. And all this mess and all these things around. Pardon the way we look. Maybe you came very early and you saw us messed up. We don't look together. Maybe you, you saw the musicians playing and I'm going crazy. Um, just pardon the way we look. We're still under construction. <laughs> we're still we're still under construction. God is still God is still measuring us. He's still checking checking um, to see if we still is still is still fitting us together. It's still, it's still fitting ourselves. So be patient with us. There's still, there's rubbish about. But just be patient. Just calm down. We, we are under construction. There, there are tools on site, and there are workmen. When there are tools and workmen on site, it means that you don't walk freely. You, you, you gotta mind how you walk. I'm very safe to put. So if things drop on my leg, it means that I'm protected. There are tools on site, but God is protected us. God is watching over us. There, are, there are things around you that people don't want to feel around. So. When people come, they are checking how they, they move around you because uh, they, they said, I don't want to offend her. You know, the last time I was around her, I stepped on her emotions. So I'm careful how I, I deal with her because you know why? You're in a delicate place. Uh, God is working on you and even the people who are familiar with you don't even know how to handle you. So um, last time they saw you, you smiled. You were happy. You were excited. You, you know, you were partying, you know, and all of that. The next day they came and you were in somber mood. You you were crying, you were broken, you, you were down and out. And, and they said, I came last week, she was laughing. Now, she, I, I don't know how to deal with that. Just leave her alone. That's it. There are tools on site. <laughs> there are tools on site. So, um, every day you come, you're trying to see something about us. You say, let me go there. They've told me so much about the household of mercy. They say, well, I'm fine. They look pretty. But the day you came, I was, please, calm down. We're under construction. <laughs> the first day you turned up on in church, you, the, the person that greeted you outside uh, smelled like rubbish. Ooh, smelled like a nightclub. And you wanted to turn back and you say, brother, don't go. This is it. This is it. <laughs> You're in the place, right? You're here. <laughs> We're under construction. God is working on us. There is more to us that meets the eyes. Look at your neighbor, tell them, this is not all there is to me. Oh, you better tell them that you believe. If, if this is all there is to you, then you don't need to tell anybody. If this is, if, and I just said, if this is all there is to you, then please don't tell me. But if you know that this is not all there is to you, and now look at your neighbor, tell them with an attitude. Don't just tell them. Tell them with an attitude. Tell them, this is not all there is to me. You best believe it. There is, there is more to, to me than meets the eyes. Uh, because by the time you come next week, 
You may not find me this way. I told my wife, we went for breakfast in Tobis. And I noticed for the first time, I've been going there. But for the first time, I noticed that when you go into the kitchen, the door that the, the, the caterers walk into is different from the doors that they bring the food out of. I observed them. Then I, I told her, I said, you know why? She said, why? I said, because they don't want collision. Yeah. So when they go in, in case someone is running out with the food, they don't collide. But beyond that, God started speaking to me while we're eating breakfast. You know, God has a funny attitude of talking when he shouldn't be talking. God started speaking to me. He said, son, you know what? The day you walk in, there were people that saw you walk into that door. That they will wait at that door to do you am. But they don't seem to understand that when you walked in, you were unprocessed. You would you look like rubbish. But when you come out, Shamanda Hida, when you come out on the other side, you look ready to be eaten, to be to be taken in. People are waiting to eat you. People are waiting to enjoy you. When you walked in the door the first time, you were all unprocessed. Because you know why? They made eggs, and I was waiting on the, on the door for my, for my well-done egg. I let my egg to be well-cooked. And God said, that is how people will wait for you. That if only you will be patient for me to process you to the point where I want you to be delivered. Then you will understand that when you come out on the other side of the door, there will be people that will be waiting for you. Not only in your local environment, not only in your community, but around the world. There will be people that will be waiting for you. But you know what? On the flip side of it, there will be people that saw you go in. That will keep waiting for you to come out the way you went in. But I'm not coming out the way I went in. I may go in broken. I may go in shattered. I may go in with tears. I'm a going weeping, I'm a going looking drunk, busted and disgusted. But let me tell you, if I come out on the other side, I'll come out fine. I'll come out like pure gold. I'll come out refined. I'll come out together. He said when he purifies you, you will come out like what? Like pure gold. So let them laugh now. Let them mock you. Let them make fun of you. The mistake we make, Bria, is that we always want to talk back. Right. We always want to explain to them, Daryl, to tell them, look, this is not me. Now. If you just wait when I come out, shut up your mouth. Just shut up your mouth and keep being on side. Let God walk on you. Let the laborers walk on you. This is why God knew that when he was about to bring the woman out of the man, if the man was still awake, he would have messed up the process. God put him to sleep. Killed him. Put the man to sleep. I said, I'm about to bring the finest thing that I've ever made out of you. If you're awake, you will mess up. For most of us, God has put you to sleep. Because what is about to bring out of you has womb, a womb man, woman, has the ability to reproduce. So he has to put you to sleep. So he can bring something precious out of you. Because every time you're too awake, you're too anxious, you're too agitated, you will mess up the process because you're too alive. So God had to kill you. He said, but the irony of it is when God put you to sleep, there are people that have seen you in the process of you being asleep and they think that that is it. You are finished. But let me tell you, the Bible said, late in the midnight hour, God will turn it around yeah. for your good. Jesus, there is somebody pulling me out of my message. Hmm. There is somebody pulling me out. God said to tell that person that don't stop crying. Don't stop crying. But don't answer them back. Come on. He said, sit it. Don't answer them back. Huh. Mm. There is a treasure on this land. There are precious stones on this land. There is valuable crude oil on this land. If you have the insight, God started speaking to me, that if you have the insight and discernment, and you are patient enough to stay the course with us. 
you will see all of these precious processed stones. They are in the ground. The reason why other people don't enjoy your faith is because they leave too early. God. Jesus. They leave too early. For those of us who belong to this house and for many of the people that are here for the first time and the people online, what I'm about to say will apply to you. God said to remind you, listen very carefully, God said to remind you that the virgin land that you are walking on, the, the land that you are walking on, the place that you are, that look like dunk, that look empty, that look abandoned, the relationship that you're in that everybody is laughing at, the business that you started that looked like it already failed before it started, the family that you have that look disjointed, the children that you gave back to that they are the laughing stock of the town, your children that have become the joke of the classroom, your, your, your finances that look empty, God said the virgin land that you're working on, God said to remind you to guard it. He said, he said, because when you finish working on it, it will become the most attractive land for everybody to come to. I was speaking to my father-in-law during the week, and that was when God gave me that word. When he finished speaking, God said, son, God, I said, what are you saying? God said, because this thing that I gave to you to work on, this assignment, this mandate that I gave to you, this, 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 this responsibility that I gave to you to work on, on he said guard it son which means he said because you know why God started speaking to me um, um, so he said he said he said there is a tendency for you to protect what is already um, um, prominent if you start a business and it's already big there is a tendency to protect it am I right there is a tendency if your family is all together if your family are the Kardashians and you know you have um, equity you know they you there is, you, you put bodyguards around, you know. If you if you if someone in your house is already a celebrity, you, you you put bodyguards to protect them. If your land is massive, you put fence around it to protect it. If if your idea is already out there in the world, you have a tendency to protect it. But you know what we do? When our idea look like nothing, when our idea look inconsequential, when our idea look irrelevant, when, when what we're working on look like rubbish, we tend not to protect it. We leave it there for everybody to walk into. So you don't protect your life. Any man can walk into your life and walk out of your life because you don't see value in yourself. <laughs> you have a business. Anybody can just come and look at your business. Mess about with your business and go away because you don't see value in your business. You see a ministry that you have because your ministry is three people. You don't guard it because you say we are small. It doesn't matter. They can do what they want. No! God says, son, guard it. He said, guard it. Your children, guard your children. Your wife, God, your wife, your husband, God, your family, God, your finances. God said your money may not be nothing. Your bank account may be red. In fact, you're in debt. The bankers are calling you. The credit cards are calling you. But they said, God, your money. Huh. Oh, because you say we just started. It doesn't matter. Anything can happen now. It doesn't matter. God said, no, God it. God said, you must learn to prepare, to preserve, and to protect it. He said, it is easy to protect what we are working on because the present outlook is sizable and massive. It is easy to protect something that looks attractive. We tend not to build a fence around a small piece of land where we grow a few vegetables, but we often build fences around what looks huge and presentable, very attractive. <laughs> we can take what other people reject and make it attractive. That is what is unique about us. What other people reject, we take it and make it attractive. You go and buy a plot of land that everybody is ignored. And once you begin to plow the land, the government calls you and says they found oil under your land. Then everybody is interested in it. 
You grow your IT idea, your technology idea, to the point where the world is interested. Damn, Mark Zuckerberg want to buy it. <laughs> I'm saying this because I know that seated here are people with ideas. The only problem is the abandoned land becomes attractive immediately after we walk on it. So God said to me, tell the people it's time to begin to trademark your ideas. It is time for you to begin to patent your ideas. Okay, patent your idea. Buy your trademark very quickly. Because what you're working on, oh, is about to explode. What God bless you with is about to increase. You're about to grow exponentially. You're about to grow in leaps and bounds. You're about to increase beyond measure. You're about to break the record that has been set about people in your age, in your demography, in your, in your, in your race. You're about to break it. God said, patent your ideas. He said, buy a trademark and put it on your idea. Spend money. So the thing is, we don't want to spend money. Because we have an idea that does not look like it is productive yet. We're asking ourselves, why would I want to use 500 pounds to trademark my idea? Nobody's buying yet. I'll tell you a secret. When you buy a website, a domain, buy every domain that look like yours. Which means if you buy www.money.co buy www.money.co.uk buy.com buy.nl buy.nl buy every of those domains is it because when you expand there are people that go and buy those domains around you and begin to drag your traffic this is a business idea you'll pay me for free later we can settle the amount please and collect the money from them and you know <laughs> I'm only joking. But buy the domains because when your business expands, there are people that go and buy the domains that are similar to yours because when they click on your domain, when people browse and search your domain, it draws traffic to them. You will thank me later. God said, do not undervalue the land I have given you or assigned you because of its present condition. He said, do not devalue your designated position and allocation by comparing it to another person or organization's finished position, product or property. So because God gave you an idea to make fabric, and then you see another organization that is made fabric that is already complete. God said, do not devalue the idea I gave you because you see the people who are doing well, they are already in their promised land. They are already in their finished state. He said, do not for any reason or at any point devalue the idea I give you because you are looking at someone who is already finished. If you are starting a relationship, forget about the people who got kids. Leave them alone. Do not look at yourself and say, who are we? Nothing. Look at them. They're already made. Leave them alone. That is them. They got their process. You have your process. There are wood all around this house. But do you know that the process that every of this wood go through is different? Oh, there are, there are things in this house, but let me tell you, the nail, the size of nail that is used to make any of these woods in these places, they are different. Because based on what God is making, we determine the kind of tools that are applied in putting you together. So when God begins to nail someone with a small nail, and then use a massive nail to nail another, don't begin to feel like, why am I being nailed with a small nail and this man is used with a big nail? Your process is different. The things that you go through is different. The amount of pain that you can handle is different from the other person. It is the reason why God said, I will not give you more than you can bear. Because if God put what she's going through on you, you would have died 10 years ago. Look, because we come to the same church doesn't mean that we're the same kind of people doesn't mean that anybody's better than any. It only means that we're uniquely designed. 
we are different. So when I'm going through my process, don't be in a hurry to judge me. Because your nail is small and God is telling you very quickly. And your process got complete very quickly. Please shut up your mouth. And when God begins to process me, it is because, listen, yours was just too good. But when God begins to process me, God knows that my process is just not on the ground. There's going to be some climbing. God knows that because of the assignment he has given me, there's going to be some height and fault. So whilst you are in a hurry, celebrating what has been done for you very quickly, you better be patient with me. My assignment is huge. My my mantle is big. My, 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 my process is uniquely connected with what God is doing in my life. So don't be in a hurry to judge me. Calm down. Look at your neighbor, tell them, please, don't be in a hurry to judge me. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Don't be in a hurry to judge me, please. Calm down, calm down. He's still working on me. I'm not finished yet. Now, the interesting, the interesting, the interesting thing, Michael, is if I'm not finished yet and I'm this productive, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm not finished yet and I'm this good looking, if I'm not finished yet and yet the enemy is trying to kill me, if I've not even started yet and the enemy is trying to eliminate me, Jesus was not even in the, in the place where God wanted him to be. He was just born and yet kings are trying to kill him. Oh. Now you know why your children are they, are, they have been marked by the enemy to eliminate them very quickly. Now you know why your children from the moment they were born, they, they were fighting even from the womb. Now, now you know why that before even your idea kicked off, uh, there were people that were already kicking off uh, because of your idea. Now you know why that it looks like you're coming out of one battle. The moment you want to breathe, uh, there is a the next battle. You know why? Because your process is different. But the thing that is interesting to me is uh, everything the enemy is doing is not been able to take you out yet. Oh God, somebody hearing me. He's not been able to take you out yet. He's still fighting. He's still throwing weapons. He's still throwing grenades. But everything that the enemy throws at you, God used to work on you. Woo! Jesus, please hear me. Everything that the enemy throws at you, God takes them and to work on you. Let me tell you, I'm not telling you that God orchestrates the problem. God did not send problem to you. The enemy will work on the problem. But the Bible says, all oh, things say, all things, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. The enemy can bring all he wants to bring. God will take them and work on you. God is a skillful manufacturer. I was teaching the Bible school on Friday and I told them, I said, you can stand in front of a, of a rock and look at it like a, a massive stone. A sculptor will look at that rock and begin to, in his mind, create things and see things and see faces and see things that is already made from that rock. It is the reason why you can sit on the wood and, and think it is just wood. But a creative furniture maker will come and look at that same wood and put it together and sell it for a thousand pounds. You know what? God is a skillful manufacturer. Yes, right. yes, he is. Jesus. God is a skillful manufacturer. We're still in construction mode. Huh. Part of this is when we finish, you will understand why you've been dealing with everything you're dealing with, but you're still here. <laughs> God said, don't try to dress smartly when there are still machines and tools and dirt on site. He said, if you're on site, be on site and dress like the site. He said, it's fine when there are visitors on site. Let the visitors know that construction work is going on. <laughs> Look, when you're on site and there are things everywhere, don't try to go and wear suits to impress the people on site. You mess up your clothes. <laughs> you say, oh, people are coming. So, no, dress like you're on site. Find a hard hat and give them to wear. Let them understand that this is where I am. But this is not all there is to me. 
This is what what is going on. The, the construction is on. We are being worked on. Laborers are on site. There are tools everywhere. There are machines everywhere. Now, the reason why you can walk around other people's sites comfortably is because uh, the amount of work going on on their side is different from mine. Because the, the kind of house you want to build will determine the kind of tools that you bring on site. Oh, if I look at some site, I will, I will, in my idea, in my own structural ability to see things, I can tell what kind of building is going on there. If I see laborers who are carrying cement on their head or carrying blocks on their shoulders, I can tell you it is not going to be bigger than a bungalow. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when I begin to see forklifts and cranes and see massive machinery, baby, you better be ready because the skyscraper is coming. Now, the reason why my sight is the way it is, so the reason why there are a lot of machines on my side, the reason why it looks like I'm all messed up and you can't fit anything around me is because of the kind of building that God is constructing on me. How sort of mercy God said to tell you the kind of mess that you're going through is because of the kind of message that you're about to produce in your generation. Amen. Oh God. Amen. You know we've always said this, if it is not one thing it's another. Ha <laughs> You will understand why. One of my prayer for you today is that God will give you the grace Amen. and the strength Amen. to endure the process. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. It would it would not take it away. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm sorry, please. Try to break your heart. Paul prayed. He said three times I prayed to him to take this thing away. It is easy to pray for God to just take it away. But God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. I could have just taken it, but no, it, is, it will do you no good. You didn't hear me. God said, it will do you no good if I take it away. It will benefit just you. Are you sure? If God take it away, what you're dealing with just like that. It will benefit just you. It is God. You will sleep, won't you? It will sleep. But God said, the reason why I'm not taking it away the way you want me to take it away is because what you are dealing with is not just for you. He said, what you're dealing with is for many. So I've given you the ability to go through the kind of pain that you're going through. But the one thing that I've done is I've put timer around it that it would not kill you. Oh. God told Satan, he said, you can do anything you want to do with Job, but you dare not touch his soul. What killed other people can't kill you. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear me. Amen. I said, what killed other people cannot kill you. Amen. There are people whose names they take to Fudu. They nailed them, they chained them, they died. Do you think they're not taking your name? You've been nailed and chained. But every time they nail and chain you, you are, oh Lord. You are. You begin to use the, the, the chains to dance, different dances, you know. And the enemy is mesmerized because they don't know what to do with you. Because everything they put on you, you're, you're moving, you're dancing, you're creating something. You're dancing before they, they put it down. They press you down, you just dance and dance and come on. What is wrong with this boy? If they tell you you're dead, then you're not moving. Like what? <laughs> I said what killed others cannot kill you. <laughs> so when you see us dance crazy, we ain't crazy. <laughs> All right. How many minutes do I have more? Two minutes. My God. This timekeeper is very efficient. Okay, time God, you use the word efficient. <laughs> I don't think that's the word I would have used. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> All right. Of course I won't be able to finish it. But I was I was praying this morning while I was on my knees praying for the service. God dropped this word in my heart. Zechariah chapter 4 from 8 to 10. It should be on the screen. This, this will be for someone. I'll, I will close with this. And I think the upper Sunday will try to finish it because next Sunday I'm in the US. 
the other Sunday we'll try to finish it but God said to me Zechariah chapter 4 from 8 to 10 he said then another message came to me from the Lord Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple and he will complete it someone say complete it he laid it he will complete it I laid it Come on, you better say it. You better speak back to me. I will complete it. You don't have to explain to everybody what you laid. <laughs> say, I laid it. I will complete it. Look, if you understand the power in what you're saying, you will say it with conviction. Because the enemy's plan is not just for you not to start it, it's a completion. So say, I laid it, I will complete it. Oh, shut up, I feel the anointing when you say that. I laid it, I will complete it. Now close your eyes, close your eyes for three seconds. Close your eyes for three seconds. Now, I want you to visualize certain things that you've laid, businesses, family. If you're in a family, remember how you started. Before the kids came, remember how you cried to God. When the business, before it started, I want you to think of how this thing started. Your idea how it started. Before you engaged that woman, before you proposed to that man, before you had that first child, before, before the business went the way it went. Now say, I laid it. I, laid it. I, will, complete I will complete it. it. Huh. Oh, glory to God. So he said, Zerubbabel is the one, the one who laid the foundation of this temple and he will complete it. That statement suggests to me that there are forces, there are things contending for you not to complete what you started. Ooh. There is something here in this world, this place that I am now. There is something here. There are things that you started that the enemy is fighting seriously for you not to complete. For Nehemiah, he brought Sambalat and Tobiah, the people that are familiar with him, to come and try to make his hand weak. So he does not complete what he started. He said, then you will know that the Lord of heaven's army has sent me. Look, when, when a message comes from God and God signs on it, right. Come on now. Mm. you can go to sleep. Mm. Now, the, the part that interests me is it, not even all this part. This is where it interests me. He said, do not despise what? Yes. The days of what? Small beginnings. The, 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 the part I like it said, he said, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin you think it is so small but God said when you start it I get excited you think the family is small God said when you start it I get excited you think the money is small but God said when you start it I got excited you think that the business is little God said when you start it I got excited you think the ministry is nothing but God said when you started I got excited you think the family look like nothing God said once you make the first move I rejoiced to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. The seven lamps represent the eyes of the Lord that sat all around the world. But God said to tell us today, it is small, but you gotta guard it because I rejoice when you start it. You are building. I'm closing now. You are building. You are putting things together. You know the, the, the building phase. I said it the last week that building is so interesting because when you're nailing things, you, you don't look pretty and you're not trying to get anybody's attention. You're just putting things together and uh, you're, 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 you're measuring things and you're checking if it is it is stable yet. People are mocking at you but you are checking. Is, is it stable yet? Is it is it, is it ready? It is, it is, 
uh, uh, is it stable yet? You, you put it, you look at it, and, and I, I understand the enemy is trying to get at you, and you were just there putting things, constructing what God has inside for you. Noah was doing the same thing, and people were laughing at him. God said, build the ark. Noah was building what no one has seen before. People were laughing. You know what? People begin to laugh at you when what you're building is not familiar to what they know. If, if you're building something that everybody's aware of, everyone know about, it is easy for them not. They will look at it, oh, I know what she's building. Just a small box. But when what you're building is not the shit that has previously existed, people tend to wonder. And their wonder and amazement tell them that they begin to mock you. But God said to tell somebody, keep on building. God said, keep on building. Don't, don't give up yet. Get the tools together. God said, don't give up yet. I don't know who you are. But God said to tell you, keep on building. God said, keep putting it together. Put it together. God said, measure it, put it, fix it, put it together. God said to tell you, your hands are tired, but keep on building. Don't give up yet. Don't, don't give up. Keep on building. It is out of shape, but keep on building. It does not line up well, but keep on building. No one has seen it before, but keep on building. People are talking about it, but keep on building. Sometimes you nail, and the nail comes out of where it should be. But God said, do not give up. Uh, keep on building. Uh, keep on building. You get it wrong the first time. You get it wrong the first time. Oh, God said, don't worry. Fix it together and keep on building. Sometimes you gotta pull out some nails to put them back together. God said, man, keep on building. So sometimes you think it is done, but when you lift it, you see it is funky. God said, but keep on building. And there is one thing to build, there is one thing to keep building, there is another thing to give up. But I don't know why I'm speaking to God said to tell you, it may look scattered, but don't give up, keep on building. Push your neighbor, tell them, keep on building. Oh, you didn't hear me. God said, keep on building. Then move it, put, put it together, try to see if it fits. Measure it together, does it fit? Does it fit? Uh, they, they, they laugh at you, but keep on building. What is this? That makes sense. Then, then God said, keep on building, put it together. Put it together. God said, work on it. Work, work on what I gave you. I gave it to you. Only I can understand what I gave to you. If God gives you an idea, don't allow anybody to define the idea or tell you what the idea should look like. If you get confused, go back to God and ask Him questions. If you can't understand in full, go back to God and ask Him questions. And David inquired of the Lord. If you're confused, ask the Lord. Cry, then ask the Lord. Cry, then ask the Lord. Weep, then ask the Lord. Be quiet, then ask the Lord. Look silly in front of people, then ask the Lord. They don't stop building. Put the children together. They call them nothing. They keep on building them. They say they are not intelligent. Keep on building them. They say your spouse is not fine. Keep on building your spouse. Your marriage don't look like what you want. Keep on working on it. The ministry don't look like what you want. Keep on working on it. The nation look disoriented. Keep on working on it. God said if I've given it to you, you better keep on working on it. He said everything that I've told you will come to pass. As long as you keep on working on it. As long as you don't give up. As long as you don't walk away. As long as you don't close shop. As long as you don't back and go. If you keep on working on it. Everything I told you will come to pass. Keep on building. Keep on building. Keep on building. Construction is on. It is all messed up. But keep on working. Everything in every place. But keep on working. We don't look pretty yet. Keep on working on it. We don't look fine yet. But keep on working on it. We don't look attractive yet. But keep on working on it. Laugh at us all you can. But we will still build. Mark us. We will still build. Talk about us. We 
will still build. Criticize us. We will still build. Touch our minds. We will still build. Take my children away. I will still build. Take from me. I will still build. Kiss the baby. I will still build. Take away from us. We will still build. I'm not the type that give up. Tell your neighbor I'm not a type that give up. I'm not a type that give up. I'm not a type that give up so easily. I'm still here. I will still build. Come rain nor shine. I will roll up my sleeve. I will still build. I will put tools in my trousers. I will still build. I didn't come this far to look pretty. I didn't come this far to please anybody. I didn't come this far to please you. My intention is not to make you be happy with me. My intention is to please God. I'll build what he wants me to build. Construction is all. We're in building mode. If you're in this house or you're watching online and you say, I don't know the builder. God is the master builder. You say, I don't know him. I've never met him. I don't have any relationship with him. Because the thing is, the reason why some of us can still run back to him is because we have a relationship with him. But if you don't have a relationship with him and the building gets to the point where it is going still, who do you run to? So I want all eyes closed, head bowed. If you're in this house and you say, I don't really know this God you're talking about. I don't really know the builder. I want to meet him. I want to meet him. As a matter of fact, there are things in me that I'd like for him to fix. People have called me names. They don't seem to get me. They don't seem to understand me. But from the way you described him, it looks like he's the only one that can put me together. If you're that person, I want you to be bold enough to come and meet me here. I will pray for you. <laughs> it doesn't matter what people look at you, how they look at you, what they say about you. He is the one that made you. Or maybe you say I'm building something but I'm just on the verge of giving up on what I'm building. I want him to help me. If you're that person, I want you to stand where you are. Oh God. Oh hallelujah. The master builder is here. The master builder. Hi, he knows everything about us. Anyone else coming? The master builder is here. Hallelujah. The master. I want us, I want us everyone to be upstanding with them. Stand where you are. If you're not coming out, if you're coming, come. If you're not coming out, stand with them. But the master builder is here. Mm. The master builder is here. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. You have an opportunity to come. The master builder is here. The master builder is here. Mm, the master builder is here. The master builder is here. Come on, let us come. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate God. Celebrate God. The master builder is here. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. The master builder is here. <laughs> oh, the master builder is here. The master builder is here. The master builder is here. Take advantage of this moment. Take advantage of this moment and meet the master builder. It is not about church going. It's about meeting the maker, the master builder. There are things in us that only him can fix. There are things in me that my wife can't fix no matter what she does. 
There are things in us that only Him can fix. Only Him can set it together. There are parts in us that people think it is out of line. But He knows why those parts are in us. It is the one that makes the furniture that can tell you that is not waste. That has been left aside because there is a part of the wound that I want to use to join a particular table to make it look different from others. There's the only one that can do that in our lives. There's the only one that can do that. I want, you, I want us to raise our hands with me. And church, I want you to join every one of them as we say, Lord Jesus, fix me. Oh, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Fix me. I surrender to you. Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. I withhold nothing. I give it all to you. Every part of me. Everything about me. All there is about me. I give it all to you. Take full control of me. Fix me like you want to fix me. Do me like you want to do me. Release me the way you want to release me. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you. Father, we thank you, God, for this wonderful children of yours that have come to you. You said when one soul comes to you, you rejoice. Lord, I present these ones to you, the ones watching online, even the ones standing behind. There are a lot of things that we're dealing with that only you. Put your hands on this woman, please. There are a lot of things we're dealing with that only you can, can sort out, can fix. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Touch us only the way you can touch us. The way that nobody can touch us. There is a touch that you touch us that has deep meaning from what man can do. Oh, Jesus. Break from us. Break from us. Long standing challenges, setbacks, reoccurring problems. <laughs> Come on. Break resurfacing problems. In the name of Jesus, break, oh God. Set us in the path that you have ordained for us. Set us in the path that you have ordained for us. Break, oh God, from this problems. This is the end of it. This is the end of it. Be your calling challenges. It is the end of it. Pour your love on us. Pour your love. Pour your love. Put your, put your mark on this one. Put your mark, oh God. I don't want to see that. Put your mark on this one, oh God. Put your mark on this one, oh God. Put your mark. Let your hand rest upon her, oh God. Pour your love. 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 Pour your love in the name of Jesus. Pour your love, oh God, on this one. Oh Jesus. Even an honest little baby. Pour your love, Lord. Pour your love, 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 oh God, pour your love in this one, man, this one, set them around to us, set them apart in the name of Jesus. Let's be seated. We'll take a announcement quickly and close 
21st of this month is a Saturday. We have the home business hub. The home business hub is for business people in this house where this, this particular session we're having is for new businesses or people who have existing businesses. We're bringing someone who knows how to incorporate business and who knows how to do tax systems. So he will come and have a session with us, teach us how to incorporate or reincorporate our businesses, what seek code our businesses should be on, what kind of government grants we can get, what kind of bank account we can open and how we, what kind of tax we can pay. He's going to be here to teach us. If you are interested in that, meet Minister Nana after the service. She will tell you how to register for it and then we can do that. And we want to, uh, we will announce him, we want to get a church bus. So if you, if you want to give towards that also, when you give your offering or you're watching online, give towards the bus. We want to get a bus that can convey people. Now we have a lot of our brethren coming from Ellsbury. Let's celebrate all the L's brethren. They're coming from a very far distance. So we want to get a bus. We've been announcing the bus will help people to come from different parts of London and outside of London and the different campuses. God is doing great things. Amen. So we celebrate God for that. And our children's church, we're still buying computers for them. So please, if you want to give to us any of this, do not hesitate. If you're struggling to spell a million, a million is M-I-L-L-I-O-N. That is million. So I can help you with that. And it's six zeros. So please, <laughs> let, us, let us get our offerings ready. And let us worship God with our offering, our giving. Our giving is part of our worship. It is not different from our worship. So the giving instructions will be on the screen. If you're given by PayPal, you can just scan um, the PayPal QR code and it will open up the PayPal app for you. If you want to give by card, the given point is there. If you want to give by cash, um, it is a so key is there. They will give you an envelope. But let us give towards the many things that God is doing. God is doing mighty things in this house. There are a whole lot of things. We're still under construction. God is still working on us and we believe that God would not leave us um, just the way we are. I will give the mic over to my wife to take the offering and pray. They're chasing me away. So let me let her um, do that quickly before we close.